Lubbock, Texas. I'm Sue Ann Rishi, your host of World of Art, and I'm here on Texas Tech campus to talk to you about the Public Art Collection. I have been looking so forward to talking to you guys about this piece, The Tornado of Ideas by Tom Otterness. Tom Otterness is known for his really lovable, funny characters, and you get to looking at these things and you're going, oh, that's so cool, and then you get up and you see, oh my God, what are they doing? He's very twisted, and, and it makes total sense with what we're doing here. All of his male characters are naked from the waist down. So check this one out. We've got this little guy, and he's staring right at his bronze member. So look, here it is again, do not climb. You must really like this book. Look where she's sitting. This man has got a twisted sense of humor. Ask me a question about this piece of art. How tall is that piece of art? Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> you, come over here. Pointed and cylindrical. Why, why is everything pointed and cylindrical? He's developed his own language in order to set himself apart from anyone else who does any kind of bronze casting or sculpture. So you can look at this piece and go, oh, that's a Tom Arnus. You know the artist's name because you know his style. When an artist combines a passion for art and a passion for their subject, you might just wind up with a piece like this by Deborah Butterfield called Wind River. I had a girl walk by earlier asking me, what does it mean? And you're gonna hate my response to that question, but my response is, what does it mean to you? And that's the first step towards understanding art, is taking it and thinking about it. So bear with me here. Art is created for many different reasons. And maybe in the case of this piece, its existence is about the pure beauty of horse and about the lines that have created it. Terry Allen is an artist that works with humor, and he's not only an artist, but he's a musician. He's got lots of funny songs, regional songs even, uh, working with Lubbock, Texas, because he lived in Lubbock, Texas for a long time. All right, let's make comparisons and look at all the clever ways that he's put this together to create parts of the human body. We've got the nose, we've got a part in the hair. We've got his tongue sticking out. If you come around on this side, you'll see his mouth is open from being having a book placed inside of another book. So he's sticking his tongue out, he's concentrating. Around to the back side, we have a spine actually created out of spines of eight books. And the funny thing about this thing is, is that they're all made of all these self-help books. So he's created out of books to help himself, to help himself learn, to help himself get around, to help himself fit in. And of course we have the crack in the book is the same as the butt crack. Does this sculpture make my butt look big? Well, clearly Terry Allen is a visionary. His inherent form is, is just so ethereal and at the same time grounded in solidarity. Hey, big fella. Hey, lady, somebody's gonna burn that thing down. It's not wood, it's bronze. So let me tell you how that happened. First, the artist finds a piece of driftwood, and then she finds another piece of driftwood, and then she puts it all together into this driftwood horse. And then she pours plaster over the entire thing, and then she puts it into this giant oven. The oven just melts all of this wood away, and you're left with a giant wooden horse-shaped hole. Then she pours the molten metal into that giant wooden horse-shaped hole, and, and, and then she blows away all of the plaster once it's cooled. And then you're left with this beautiful horse. And the last process is to take a patina, which is a chemical that she puts onto it, to bring that wood color and wood texture back to the metal. And that's how that happens. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh. Oh my God. It's Sister Wendy. Look. What do you think we could get for that on eBay? So, why do you think there's no pants on all the men in the sculpture? I'm thinking that bronze pants are very expensive and I think the artist just wasn't paid enough. I'm thinking without pants, 
$10,000. With pants, $50,000. You know, and they're just like, ah, uh, we'll just opt for no pants. All right. At the base of this sculpture is the White House. It's been torn in half. We have a squirrel in the middle. We can't tell if it's a squirrel or a beaver, but I'm betting it's a beaver because didn't a beaver tear apart the White House during President Clinton's term? And so, where was I? It's just this sculpture that transcends sculpture. Hey man, what you reading? All right, site specific, that's appropriate. Site-specific means that a sculpture has been placed in that place for a reason. He makes sense with the environment, and he makes sense with the city and with the culture. This guy happens to be facing the library, so he's walking towards the library, and he's studying upside down this, di this dictionary. His rear end faces the administration building, and I think that's probably more uh, more the appropriate reason as to why he's facing the way he's facing. And so, he, where was I? It's more like sculpture, but it's not, it's not sculpture. It's like a sculpture or maybe the sculpture that he just, you know, works with such inherent qualities. And <laughs>